This video was made possible by my Patreon supporters and everyone who helped crowdfund this video. Thanks, guys! Hello, everyone! Today is Friday, November 18th, 2022. The Washington Metro Silver Line extension to Dulles Airport has been in operation for three days now. It is now the weekend, the first weekend of operation of the line, and to celebrate, I'm riding not just that line, but every Silver Line on the East Coast. That's Pittsburgh, Boston, and, of course, Washington. In that order. I'm not riding lines that are just colored silver. I'm not riding, you know, bus services that happen to have a silvery branding. We're only doing rapid transit lines that are actually called the Silver Line. Starting right here in... We begin here at Allegheny Station on this very windy, very cold day. This station is the northern terminus of the light rail system. From here, trains head south towards either South Hills Village or Library. As you can quite possibly hear, they're playing classical music, which is an iconic feature of the Pittsburgh Silver Line. Now here's a map of the light rail system. The light rail begins here at Allegheny on the North Shore, then crosses into downtown, runs through a tunnel, and crosses a bridge over the Monongahela River to Station Square. Then it heads south, branches in two. The blue and silver lines take the easternmost branch, and the red line takes the westernmost branch comes back together down here, runs together for a little bit, and then splits off once again. At this point, the Silver Line becomes an independent line running south to Library. This is, in fact, the oldest of the three Silver Lines that we are riding, but it was only branded as the Silver Line in 2020, meaning it was the newest branded Silver Line, even though the line has existed long before the Boston or Washington systems were even thought of. Originally, it went all the way to the town of Charleroi, but now it ends in Library. Okay, so we're starting our Silver Line adventure and suddenly the whole world has turned silver. Here comes our train to take us away from this blizzard. And here we go! <laughs> Passing through the downtown Pittsburgh Tunnel, we cross the Monongahela River on the Panhandle Bridge, duck into the Mount Washington Transit Tunnel, and then separate from the Red Line and South Busway. This section of track is known as the Overbrook Line, and it's been in use since 1874 with streetcars using it since 1910. From 1999 to 2004, the line was upgraded to light rail, with greater station spacing and faster speeds. Passing through Castle Shannon, we meet up with the red line at Willow, and continue together until Washington Junction, where both the blue and red lines head west towards South Hills Village. We're now on exclusively Silver Line territory, riding deep into Bethel Park on lines which still sport old-fashioned trolley pulls. Frustratingly, trains often have to stop at road crossings, but we're still making good time. As of 2018, the Silver Line carried approximately 6,545 passengers daily, making it the least ridden of the three Pittsburgh light rail lines. And here we are at Library. One Silver Line down, two to go. And as for me, it's time for some food. Time to head to the appropriately named... Hold on a minute. Well, remember how I said the Silver Line was only the Silver Line since 2020? Turns out before then, it was the library branch of the Blue Line. And that's why the Blue Line Grill is called the Blue Line Grill, even though it's nowhere near the Blue Line. Also, fries on a salad. That's a thing here, apparently. So now that I'm full of ranch dressing and french fries and some leaves as well, I'm heading towards a rail trail to walk off the calories, specifically the Montour Rail Trail, which kind of wraps around the south of Pittsburgh and crosses over the Silver Line. This used to be the Montour Railroad, and then it became a walking trail. Interestingly, this map still displays the blue line to library, which is the original configuration prior to the rebranding of the silver line. So if this is Library Station in the town of Library, Pennsylvania, where's the library? Well, it turns out there is no public lending library here in town. Rather, the town was named after a private library that Mr. John Moore founded in 1833, and my mouth is getting so cold, oh my gosh! 
But that's not to say you can't go to the library with the silver line. Right here near Mesta Station is the Bethel Park Library. Inside this aging paperback book, we can find the original route of the library line, back when it went all the way to Charleroi. Of course, looking for accurate information on the history of the Silver Line in a random library is a bit of a wild goose chase. That offends me. So here at Lytle Station, we see another map that is not updated with the Silver Line. It still only shows the red and blue lines. The Monongahela Ink Line is closed for renovation. We know. It's expected to reopen before the end of the year. Sure. Originally, this line was a streetcar, which means it had very, very frequent stations. When it became light rail, they removed some of the stations, but uh, you can see the stairs to one of them right here. There it is. Set of stairs next to some track. Very exciting. And that's a wrap on the Pittsburgh Silver Line. Hopefully the next Silver Line will be a little bit warmer. Oh right, I'm going to. Oakland hits different at 3 a.m. Here's a classy wheel travel tip. Make sure you have your driver's license or passport before you go to the airport. I, uh, didn't do that. And now I'm getting an Uber, which costs more than my flight. I realized that I could cut the bus off downtown by having the Uber bypass the normal 28X route. And uh, we ended up here about four minutes before the bus. So now my mistake only costs me 30 bucks. Alrighty, take two made it to the airport, which is unusually crowded. So to get up to Boston, we're going to be riding JetBlue's Airbus A220 aircraft, which is fairly new, and this one's named Never Gonna Give Blue Up. I am too tired for this. Alright, we have made it to Logan Airport, and this is actually really convenient because the Silver Line 1 bus comes right here to the airport. So here on the map we can see the routes that the Silver Line takes. The uh, SL1, SL2, and SL3 buses all use a shared tunnel into South Station. Then there's a loop around Design Center, a loop around the airport, and a run up to Chelsea, which uses its own dedicated right away right up here. These guys, the SL4 and SL5, use bus lanes down to Nubian. But because the bus loops around like so, if we'd gotten on here, where we landed, then we'd miss these two stops. Boston's Silver Line opened in phases between 2004 and 2018, and saw 39,000 daily riders in 2019. Here at Logan Airport, our SL1 bus makes a loop around the arrivals level, then gets onto Route 90 to cross the Boston Main Channel in the Ted Williams Tunnel. Surfacing in the Seaport District, a fairly recent upscale development on old industrial land, we pass the World Trade Center station and enter the downtown busway at Silver Line Way, where we also switch to overhead trolley bus power, the only trolley bus system left on the MBTA. This tunnel opened in 2004, and it contains bus-only stations at the World Trade Center and Courthouse, as well as a transfer hub at South Station. Okay, we have made it to South Station, where the Silver Line interchanges with commuter rail, Amtrak, and most importantly for us, the Red Line. Calcidon, from previous videos, is joining us. She's coming in on the Fitchburg Line. I told her I would meet her at North Station, but what she doesn't know is I'm actually intercepting the Fitchburg Line at Porter. Attention passengers, the next Red Line train from Gale is now approaching. Hi. 
Hi. So we're stopping in Chinatown and we got food. Why are the chickens so fat? Those are called pigeons. No, they're chickens. Look how big they are. So I got a sesame ball and Kalki got a beef bun. Beef bun. I look like a beef bun right now. So puffed up. Like the chickens. Where are the chickens? They're not chickens! So from here in Chinatown, we're going to catch the SL4 and SL5. These buses don't use the bus tunnel. They simply use uh, bus lanes. As you can see, this only bus lane is obviously only being used by buses. The weakness of these sorts of bus lanes, as you can see there, is that they kind of disappear when it's time to turn right at every stoplight. So practically speaking, you're basically putting cars in the bus lane about every block. It's colder than my soul out here. What happened to your soul? Here's Tufts Medical Center, and that's where we'll be getting on. Someone got a ticket for parking in the bus lane. Bad, bad citizens. Bad. Now, the above ground Silver Line buses don't use poles, they just use diesel engines. Like boring normal buses. It's almost like the only thing that makes them different is that they're painted silver. Now, the station sees the SL4 and SL5. But then up here, at the intersection, I believe they split and do different loops through downtown. The SL5 is one of two surface-level Silver Line routes, with a loop through the center of Boston's downtown that serves Chinatown, the Emerson Paramount Center, and Downtown Crossing. We only need to ride this portion of the route, as everything else will be covered by the SL4. Oh, that's the SL4, we want that. Uh, let's see if we can run across here. So Kalkina, if I didn't tell you this was a special bus with special like lanes and stuff like that, would it feel any different to taking a normal bus? No, not really. I don't feel any different. I, I mean, I like the temperature in here. I'd rather be here than outside, but then... The SL4 makes a more easterly loop, serving South Station, the only station to be served by both the surface level and tunnel routes of the Silver Line. At some point, Planners considered linking the two services, but that ended up being cut due to cost. Interestingly, the SL4 and SL5 use local bus fares, while the other three use rapid transit ones. I spy people turning and parking in the bus lane. So the bus lane doesn't officially begin at the intersection, it kind of is just like gray parking area, and only then do we have the red bus lane over here. The higher numbered Silver Line routes replaced the Washington Street Elevated, which used to carry the Orange Line through this part of Boston. Cam. We were at Roxbury. This is where a lot of Ethiopians live, actually. You should live there. I'm not going to share where I, where I live on camera, okay? So this here is Nubian Station. It is the terminus of the SL4 and SL5, and until 1987, it was the terminus of the Orange Line. But then that was realigned, and it was converted into a bus-only station. The station used to be called Dudley Station, after the nearby Dudley Square, but it is now Nubian. No, it was called Kushite Station. What? All you Habashas or Africans will get that. So here we have a typical Silver Line shelter, with Kalkidan for comparison. And we have some hostile benches here. So it's not hostile to Kalkidan, it's just hostile to normal sized people. What do you mean normal sized people? Since this part of Boston is home to many diaspora communities, we are going to... Tropical Foods! Which is an international grocery store. Yeah, it's like... It's where we all used to come when we were in undergrad, and so we got all our African produce and stuff, so yeah, we're gonna visit it. The tropical, the African jungle. This is like an Ethiopian favorite. There's also this Ethiopian store called Mercato, which I would not have noticed at all if Calcadon had not pointed it out. Yeah. It's kind of one of the biggest Ethiopian stores in Boston. They got everything. Hi, here at Classy Whale, I only endorse the finest of products. But today I'm endorsing... 
Ambo water. Ambo water. Yeah, it's actually like a mineral water. What? What are you doing? Put the plastic back. It's hard, right? Mm. Yep, it is. That's hard. a lot more intense than bubbly. Mm-hmm. All right, we've had some lunch. I'm incredibly tired, as you can probably tell. But now, the two of us are going to ride the SL2. You mean the three of us are going to ride the SL3? Hi, Eddie. Hi. And that's actually perfect timing because we have the SL2 boarding right now. Classy Will says we're going to dry dock. It's our final destination on the SL2. But this is like very confusing. If we're going to dry dock, but it's near the sea, why don't they call it a wet dock? For your information, Eddie, a dry dock is a type of dock that can be drained of its water so that ships' hulls can be repaired. This whole part of Boston retains its industrial seaport feel, although it's also home to the Boston Design Center. Harpoon Brewery? Oh no, let's get out of here. And I'm going to buy a harpoon to scare Classy Will. But that said, there's hardly anyone on board the bus. There used to be another Silver Line branch that went a little further from here to City Point, but if ridership was anything like this one, I'm not surprised they cut it. This really doesn't feel like the kind of place that would merit a uh, express bus service. Today we're gonna teach Kalo how to blow some bubblegum! <laughs> How did people ever figure out this was possible? So this is one of the underground stations of the Silver Line. This is called World Trade Center. It's uh, like a big garage, basically. But it's a station. This Kalkinon is doing an interpretive dance. Please watch where you're going. Thank you very much. Caution! Happy Dog Crossing! So here we have Silver Line Way Station, where some buses switch from electric power to diesel power. Oh, there we go. There we go, they're coming down. Do not enter! Authorized vehicles only. Oh no! Non-hostile bench, which could fit Calcudon, possibly. Oh, her toes are hanging off the end. Yeah, and you can see. As you can see, buses at Silver Line Way automatically switch between electrical and diesel power. This station takes up valuable land in one of Boston's fastest growing neighborhoods, and a developer is currently planning to build on top of it. Our SL3 arrives, and disappointingly, it's a regular bus. It's also packed. Kalki, Eddie, and I are grateful when we pass Logan Airport and reach the Chelsea Busway, ending at the new Chelsea Commuter Rail Station. See, this is the problem with so-called bus rapid transit. There's still, you know, all these red signals. And here we are in Chelsea, and we are freezing, and we don't want to keep filming, so let's jump cut to... Actually, we're still at Chelsea, because we found a toaster next to the track for some reason. Hello, I really think you should take that home with you. You don't even have a microwave. Well, it is December 26th, which is uh, not the same weekend as the last two portions of this video because I was very, very tired at the end of the Boston segment and decided not to film the DC one. So now I'm in DC and we're finally going to ride the Wamata Silver Line. And with me is my sister. Hello. So the Metro Silver Line starts here in downtown Largo, Maryland. It then crosses the Anacostia River through downtown, sharing tracks with the blue and orange lines. After crossing the Potomac in a tunnel, it leaves the blue line, follows the orange line to East Falls Church, and then splits off heading towards Dulles Airport on its own right of way, before ending in Ashburn, Virginia. And as a silver lining of doing this a month after the first two silver lines, I'm doing my first ever subscriber meetup. Welcome to Classy Wheel, guys. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Stump. David Lee from Clinton, Maryland. Hey, I'm Ryan. Tommy. 
Brian Rodewald from Northern Virginia. And we're going to ride the Silver Line from here in downtown Largo, recently renamed from Largo Town Center, to Ashburn. You guys ready? We are. Let's go. So as Stump has pointed out, because this station was renamed very, very recently, they literally just pasted downtown Largo on top of the signs. Not bad for government work. So here is a train coming in. It's currently lettered for the blue line, but I wonder if they're going to then repurpose it for the silver line. I hope we have the uh, 7000 series here. Also, Brees has joined us. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Wait, how tall are you? Six foot six. Blue line and silver line are both delayed. Oh, it says it's due to a person on the track outside courthouse. All right, boarding silver line three out of three. Welcome, welcome. This is a uh, special classy wheel chartered train. Good, this is actually happening. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. Welcome. And you are? I'm Jacob. Hello, Jacob. Yes. Nice hat. We are all waiting with eager anticipation for the switch. Reese has discovered he doesn't quite fit. Ah, oh, there we go. That was a little uh, anticlimactic after all the buildup. Leaving Largo, we cross over to the westbound track, then plunge into a tunnel, briefly emerging to cross a wire enmeshed bridge. We got some more subscribers joining us here at, uh, what is it, Capitol Heights? Hi, I'm Cole, Cole Thompson on YouTube, at Cole Thompson. Hi, I'm Andy. Only if Metro had open gangways. <laughs> yeah, we were at, all the way at the end of the other car down there, so we've just been going up one car at a time. We cross from Maryland into Washington, D.C., then emerge from the ground, merge with the Orange Line, and fly over the Anacostia River and the far end of the D.C. streetcar. Then we're back in the tunnels again. Stadium Armory was originally considered as a turnback location for the Silver Line, but it was eventually axed in favor of Largo. We're now running through downtown DC. As we ride, some of us engage in lively transit-related conversations, others don't. We roll under the Potomac and into Roslyn, our first Virginia station complete with a split-level platform to accommodate a flyover junction with the Blue Line, which leaves us here. From here, the line continues under Arlington before emerging in the median of Interstate 66. Before too long, we're on a flyover junction, leaving the Orange Line and entering the median of the Dulles Access Road, heading up to Tyson's, the 12th largest employment center in the United States. This section of the Silver Line opened in 2014, after decades of planning. After Wheelie Rest in East, we're on the newer 2022 section of the line, which opened only last month. The biggest attraction of this section is the flyover track to Dulles Airport, the largest of DC's three airports by land area. Leaving this, we pass the system's largest storage yard and return to the median, finally arriving in Ashburn. And here we are in Ashburn! We made it, guys! Yeah. We're talking an hour. We did a derail! Hour 40 minutes. Despite <laughs> my best efforts. What? That's three silver lines down, none to go. We have done it, and now we're gonna stay on the train and go back in the other direction and check out the Udvar Hazy Center. You guys excited? It's hazy. It's hazy? It's Udvar Hazy. Okay. Now you know. Or am I just being hazed? Oh! You gotta say Lancaster. You have to say Lancaster. It's Lancaster. Lancaster. No. Sue me. the most ridership I've seen in a Fairfax connector bus, and I've taken the 401 and 402 every year. You have all the parking garages, so you would think there wouldn't be the parking lots, but you still have the parking lots. There's one right there. They should have an auto train service on the metro. Yeah. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sending you guys on a photo scavenger hunt. Um, you only need to find one thing, but it's a thing that you need to think about. I want you to find a plane that you personally relate to, and then take a little video clip saying, I relate to this plane because 
something. Yep, for you, Corsair. Quite possibly one of my favorite aircraft. Everything that I love but about aircraft is pretty much embodied in the Corsair. I am choosing this NASA oblique wing research aircraft because it just, it caught my eye because it's so small and funky and off kilter. And so I feel like it represents me quite well. This is the F-35 and apparently it went over budget. I can relate to that because everything I do goes over budget. I like the Concorde because it's, it's the, it was like the definition of, of supersonic travel and it kind of gave the world an opportunity to see how you can get from like New York to the your, to Europe in like about three hours time. This is the Space Shuttle Discovery. It's important to me because I got to watch it fly here on the back of a Boeing 747 from my elementary school. I've always been a sucker for red and white paint schemes on things like Caltrain and stuff. And this is just a really goofy aircraft in general. Super impractical and uh, not easy to take places. So yeah, that's, that's relatable. Successors to the 367-80 enabled me to travel around the world as a passenger. Well, that is the SR-71 Blackbird. I relate to this plane because it's obvious. So now we are on our way to Inatye Ethiopian Restaurant, the only Ethiopian restaurant on the Silver Line Extension. You guys hungry? What? Are you guys hungry? Yes. yes. Natia Ethiopian restaurant is kind of that way and Google Maps says it will take like 30-40 minutes to walk from here to there but I don't think it's been updated with pedestrian access oh 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 you got this you got this Woo! country strolls <laughs> so what makes a silver line well when a city is designing a transit system with colored lines Silver is not usually the first color they come up with. Instead, if Pittsburgh, Boston, and Washington silver lines are anything to go off of, silver lines seem to be lines that are thought of later, and added for whatever the newest or furthest flung destination is, whether it's the lesser served south of Allegheny County, the new Boston Seaport District, or Tyson's and Dulles Airport in Virginia. And if my experience is anything to go off of, these sorts of lines are worth riding. Because of them, I was able to experience so much and connect with so many people. And beyond buses, trains, stations, and roadways, that's what transit is fundamentally about. So what did you guys think of the Ethiopian food? It was very good, thank you. It was delicious. First time experience, thank you for the wonderful food. Really good. Everyone liked it? Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yep. I especially enjoyed the pigeon. I mean chicken.